Hello and welcome. It is Madeline here. I am super excited to be here with you today to share this really important topic that you asked for. I have my corporate friends on the line as usual and some of them have asked for this topic as well and I was inspired to talk about it so I'm happy to finally be able to bring you my five steps for dealing with difficult people or negative people in your environment. Hey, Christine, good to see you, good to see you. I hope this message serves everyone who's watching today. So I know that this is a hot topic, right? We all have people in our lives that push our buttons, right? So I'm dealing, I'm, I'm working with someone right now who says, oh, these people, they push my buttons, right? I think that's something that we can all relate to. They are either, actually, they know how to rub you, the wrong way or you have very different perspectives on how things should be, right? Which is actually step number one. Or maybe, you know, like you're here with me on a regular basis, you are involved in personal development and learning and growing and you are trying to be, right? You're working towards being positive most of the time and maybe there's a lot of negativity around you, right? I hear this a lot, especially in the workplace, people who go to a workplace and that, you know, like, how do I deal with the negativity in my office? How do I deal with the negativity at work? Maybe it's someone at home, right? Like a spouse or a child and or maybe a family member that you're close to, right? And we don't wanna dissociate ourselves from close family members sometimes, and at work, we're not always in control of who is involved, who's in our inner work circle, right? Or who we have to deal with in our work circle. So it could be challenging when you have to deal with someone that you don't like, or you don't think does as good a job as you do, or you have to work with them and you have very different views of the world and it's hard for you to come to a meeting of the minds and you have to, and for your work, you have to come to a meeting of the minds or for your sanity at home, your peace at home, it's important to come to a meeting of the minds and but you don't know how to do that. And as a result, you are experiencing friction or discord at work and it's making you unhappy unhappy right because then we have these then we have these exchanges right these negative exchanges at work or at home and then it follows us after the exchange happens right because we ruminate about it in our mind right we replay what happened and the the exchange the conversation the discussion the argument the disagreement over and over and over again in our mind right and we replay all of the oh, i should have said this or i should have said that and of course you didn't and then it consumes all of this energy time and energy that you don't have to spare right and it makes you tired it exhausts you and it brings your mood down right because not only did you have that not only did you have that exchange at work or at home or what have you, now you're carrying it around with you all day, right? Or all day, all evening, at bedtime, it's racing around in your mind. I know that you can know that what, what that's like. So what do you do about it, right? So here we go. I have five steps. And of course I have some steps for you. And the first step is, this is one of the 14 principles of success that successful people use to perpetuate their success in this world. And that is respect the other person's model of the world, okay? So that means that you acknowledge that the other person's model of the world is different from yours and that you respect that it's different from yours. So this doesn't mean that you agree with them. It means that you, again, it, it bears worth repeating because this is, this is a difficult one, right? You acknowledge that their model of the world is different from yours, that their perspective, their belief is different from yours, and that you respect that their belief is different from yours, even though it's different from yours, right? So I'm dealing with, I'm working with a client who is responsible for union negotiations, right? And I've been involved in union negotiations myself in a past life. 
And I think that's a perfect example of respecting the other person's model of the world or a situation where models of the world are very different, aren't they? Right, that's right, because we have usually two opposing sides of an issue and they all want something, they often want something different. So, and I know that when I said this to my client, like I could see the tension in her physiology about respect the other person's model of the world. Again, it doesn't mean that we agree with them. It means that we respect it and that we try to see things from their perspective. So from the vantage point of the union negotiations, right, everyone find a common ground, right? And everyone is there because they want to achieve a, an equitable and an agreeable arrangement for themselves, right? So that's what we both want. And they, everyone wants to do it as quickly as possible, right? As quickly as possible with minimizing stress and the time that it takes that comes to an equitable, that it takes to arrive to an equitable and fair agreement. Okay, so respect the other person's model of the world. Step number two is recognize that the other person is you, okay? So this one is really powerful and it's probably the most difficult. It was really difficult for me and that is, and this even goes beyond we're all connected, we're all brothers and sisters, right? I love you as I love my myself as uh, Jesus and other other teachers taught us this goes beyond that to see that the other person is you hey Benoit good to see you I'm glad you made it so back when I was in corporate I have a story about this and an exercise that I strongly encourage you to do but is not for the weary or the weak of heart okay because this was very humbling Right. So back when I was in corporate, I had to deal with I'm in fine. I, I used to be in finance, for those of you that don't know. And I used to have to deal with this executive that I really didn't like, really knew how to push my buttons. And he was really a challenge for me. And he challenged me on a regular basis. Hey, but anyway, he challenged me on a regular basis. He would ask me questions that I found unreasonable. He would ask me for data that I would that I found excessive and unreasonable and unnecessary for him to do to do his job. He would ask me he would ask me questions um, at the last hour, right? Either before or uh, either before a meeting or before a deadline. He would request changes. Uh, the last hour and he was really oh he was really a thorn and in my side I really disliked working with him and I dreaded having to interact with him and I dreaded seeing his name come up in my inbox or on my phone because I had caller the you know our company had caller ID so around that time, you know, and he followed me into two jobs, right? So I had two positions in which I had to deal with him at the same, at the same capacity or at the same level. So in around that time, around that time, Deepak, Deepak, Dr. Deepak Chopra, who was my teacher, had given me an assignment, which was this uh, shadow exercise. And I strongly encourage you to do it if you've got the stomach for it, okay? Which was, you know, pick someone that you really don't like. This, this person immediately came to mind and list out all the aspects of them that you don't like about them, right? So this was easy for me to, you know, make this uh, quick, long list of all the attributes of this person and everything that I didn't like about them, okay? And then the second part was a little bit more difficult, but not yet the hardest part, which was make a list of all the attributes of them that you do like, right? All the things about them that you do like. And no, 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 I don't want to hear that there isn't anything about this person that you like, 
right? So there's, there are, this person has, or their positive attributes, okay? Even if it's too hard for you to come up with things that you like about this person, they're positive attributes, okay? So I, de I reached inside and I was able to make a list of this person's positive attributes. And then what you do is you look at both lists one at a time and we start with the negative list, the, le the negative attributes or the things that you dislike. And then where are those attributes present in yourself? And let me tell you, that was painful because I was able to find all of those attributes in myself. It was very humbling and it really allowed me to shift into a different way of being and interacting with this person and really enlightened me to myself and things that I needed to work on, on myself. Because the things that you don't like in other people are the things that you don't like in yourself, okay? And I've been hard pressed to find everyone who's been able to say, no, no, I don't like that about, I don't see that in myself. When push comes to shove on some level, the things that you don't like about other people are attributes of yourself on some level that you dislike as well, that you'd like to change. And the universe and its infinite wisdom and omnipotence brings you that through other, you know, brings those learnings to you through other people. So the other column was what do you, what do you like about this person? What are their positive attributes? And, you know, those are the positive attributes that you like about yourself that you would also like to bring forward. The universe also blesses us with a positive mirror as well to give us the opportunity to see that, yes, I like these things about myself as well. These are attributes or characteristics that I want to cultivate in myself and bring forward more, okay? So recognize, number two, recognize that the other person is you, okay? And do that exercise if you dare. And if you do, let me know how it goes for, goes for you. You don't have to share the details, you don't have to share the lists, but let me know that you did it and how it worked out for you. Number three, is uh, is I learned from uh, Gabby Bernstein and that she learned from her teacher, Yogi Bhajan. And that is be the change that you want to see in the world. I'm already guessing that this talk isn't going the way that you expected, perhaps. But be the change that you want to see in the world. And I also have, oh, before I do that, I forgot, I forgot to tell you the, I'll tell you in the recap. Be the, number three, be the change that you want to see in the world. Hey, Kevin, good to see you. If you're online, type hello in the chat so I can, uh, so I can know that you are here. So I have another story about this one as well. So years ago, this woman used to do my nails, right? She was, she was my nail tech. So I, we became pretty close because I saw her every couple of weeks for years, right? So we became pretty close and I started to teach her and coach her and she would, you know, we would share personal things about our lives and she would share with me that her husband was moody, right? And he would have these mood swings in which he would speak to her for months at a time or wouldn't say more than what was absolutely necessary, right? So it wasn't, maybe it wasn't completely silent, but he didn't say any more than was necessary in order not to be out and out mean or spiteful to her and I would ask and I would ask her um, what happened right what happened to prompt this behavior and she insisted that nothing had happened that she honestly didn't know what you know what was the source of this behavior but whatever the source of this that if she had done something she didn't know what it was and she honestly didn't believe that she was the source of the behavior but as you can imagine it was a challenge, it was tense, right? It was uncomfortable to be in an environment where your, your spouse is not speaking to you, right? It was uncomfortable. So as I, as I mentioned, you know, I was coaching her and I was teaching her and, you know, just in conversation, I would 
you know, I taught her to meditate. I would, you know, we would talk about the lessons, the sort of thing that we talk about here. And, you know, we would talk about this knowledge and this growth and the spiritual wisdom. And, you know, I would say to her, you know, be, be the change that you want to see. Pray for him, which is, I'm getting ahead of myself. That's the next, that's the next step. And, um, you know, just be the best version of you. You don't want to confront the situation, right? Or if you have and that didn't work, be the best version of you. And because when you are the best version of you, people around you will automatically, energetically become the best version of themselves. So as my nail tech grew, expanded her spiritual practice, um, improved herself, her relationship with her spouse improved, and she really didn't do anything different other than practice these principles that we're talking about today and presented herself as the type of person that she wanted to be and the change that she wanted to see in her household. And I'm happy to report that um, I haven't seen her in a while because that nail salon has since closed down for years, but we were together for years and that behavior, right? Her spouse's behavior changed. And as far as I know, it didn't wear its ugly head again because she had changed, right? So she had changed and as a result, her environment and her relationship had changed, had improved dramatically and that they are closer than ever as a result. And I got a little bit ahead of myself with number four, which was, thanks for the love, I can't see who it is. Um, and number four, which was pray for them, right? So, and you know, I advised my, my nail tech and friend at the time to pray for him and pray for them is advice that I got from a very dear friend of mine who is a Christian minister. Years ago, I was going through a very hard, a very difficult breakup, and I was really, I was really suffering from heartache. And my friend, Reverend Dave, said, pray for him. Madeline, pray for him. It'll, one, you should pray for him, and it'll help you heal. And that was pretty powerful, and it really did help me heal my wounds much faster than I think would have been possible had I not been praying for, for him. And the last step is meditate, right? Because if you're not meditating and expanding your awareness, you'll be hard pressed to do any of these, let alone all of them. Okay. And I want to go back to number, well, here's the recap, right? So meditation is the foundation of everything that I teach, right? You should be meditating on a regular basis if you want to have an amazing life and um, and good luck reaching an amazing life if you're not meditating on a regular basis. And again, meditation is required to expand your awareness and compassion to make space and be able to practice all of the other steps that we talked about today. Again, number one, respect the other person's model of the world. Number two, recognize that the other person is you. Okay, so back to that executive that used to give me a hard time, right? Not intentionally, he wasn't giving me a hard time, but he was a challenge for me over two jobs. So after I did that exercise, and then after I started recognizing that the other person is me, respecting the other person, the other person's model of the world, not only did I stop being bothered by his behavior, he was less available to be in my world, right? He, he had, he was called in the organization to do other, to have other responsibilities, have to do other duties where he just wasn't available to be in meetings with me. He wasn't available to be asking me the questions that would make me crazy. And eventually, actually in very short order, he eventually left the organization and he was no longer, he was no longer a part of my life. At all uh, but that's because I believe that I respect I practice these steps right I respected um, his model of the world most powerful in this instance for me is recognize that the other person is you be the change that 
you want to see, right? So just show up and be the best version of you that you can possibly be in every situation at all times, right? Just be your best, not perfect. Another, a post for another day. Just be your best. Pray for them, right? And praying for them, right? Because what we, the, the love and the energy that we send out to others is what's coming back for us in prayer, right? Or send them positive energy, whatever word resonates with you. I know some people don't like the word prayer, but you get the idea. And meditate, right? Meditate is going to expand your awareness, increase the love and compassion and, and kindness in your heart that will allow you to practice any or all of these steps, right? So listen, if you do all of these things or some of these things, maybe you don't do them at all, and people are in your thing, and you're thinking, I still want to smack some people, I feel you. <laughs> I feel you, I do. Um, I invite you to book a breakthrough call with me, right? So it's free and it's my gift to you. It's a service that I provide where we'll, we'll look at what's not working in your life, who's pushing your buttons and why, and if I can, if I can help you fix it, right? I'll show you how, okay? And you do that by going to madelinecorea.com forward slash talk and booking a time to talk to me now. And uh, we'll also paint a crystal clear vision for your future, okay? We'll get clear on what's not working in your life, who's pushing your buttons in your life, and how would you like it to be instead? And if I can help you get there, I'll show you how, okay? So again, madelinecorea.com forward slash talk. I hope this serves you. And oh, we still have a few people on the line. I'm going to log off and then I'm going to meditate on a conference line with my corporate friends, okay? So if you'd like to join us in that guided meditation, okay, here are the conference call. I just posted the conference call information. You're welcome to log in via the web or dial in to the conference call. And we're going to meditate together for just a few minutes. So I hope this serves you. And I will look forward to seeing you again in the next video. And until then, I will see you in the gap. Namaste. Be blessed. Mwah.